someone that was on my list, and of course the two are hand in hand because we're both fans of DPJ, Deshaun Watson. I mean, guys, what are we doing here? He's going as QB8, QB9, even sometimes falls into like the ninth, tenth round or ninth round, really. Um, going after Tua, going after sometimes Daniel Jones. Dude, what are we doing here? Deshaun Watson was a top five fantasy quarterback for years. He is an upper it's the narrative talent. I know. And I understand, guys. He had a lot of off-field drama. But we're not drafting for off-the-field drama. We're drafting for their production on Bingo. the field. So whether you like Deshaun Watson or not, you cannot deny his talent. You cannot deny his production. He's been there in the past with top five quarterback seasons. Honestly, I project him to have another top five quarterback season. And if not top five, I think it'll be number six. Um, I was watching the ETR on one of the ETR podcasts uh, with Pat Thorman, who does a great job of covering pace in the NFL. Um, and he's got the Browns as being one of those higher pace teams. So, you know, that's going to be a lot more opportunities to one, run offensive plays, but then two, throw the ball. Um, and that feeds right back into Donovan Peoples-Jones because if Deshaun Watson's smashing his ADP, well, guess what? His pass catchers are going to smash the ADP. Now, granted, Deshaun Watson's got a lot of rushing upside. So also don't forget about that. Um, he's a great thrower of the ball. So he's more passer first then thrower he's not justin fields but he does have the ability to run with his legs and if you don't believe me go check his first start against the Bengals. his rookie year man took off for a 49 yard touchdown and beautiful to watch so i yeah. still believe in deshaun watson i believe in the upside and i really do believe he's gonna print some money this year and when i say that he's my fifth most drafted player on underdog my number one quarterback drafted uh, on 26 percent of my teams Nice. There you go. See, I'm, I'm a little bit lower on the um, percentages. Well, they'll probably even out because I'm still pretty early in my draft. So I'm going to try to go over 100. I'm nowhere near as, as deep as you are yet. But I got Watson here at 53% owner, or, uh, roster percentage. And I'm just looking at his numbers, too. I mean, seven touchdowns, five interceptions. That's not a typical Deshaun Watson season. And we should know that. So we can kind of adjust that in our heads, okay? That'll go up. Then you look at the rushing yards, 175 rushing yards for a guy that only started a handful of games. I mean, there are pocket passing quarterbacks that probably played 18, oh, all 18 games didn't even have that. I mean, here's Dak, for instance. I know he missed a couple, but 182, played way more games. Um, yep. Cousins, probably a terrible example. But 97 yards for Cousins. He played a bunch of games. So it's like Deshaun Watson barely hit in the field, put up 175 too. So he still can get it with his legs. We know that, and this is probably, I mean, if we're honest, do you think this is the best pass catching group he's ever had? Because I do, except you might be able to say the Will Fuller Hopkins year was that good. But I think that these guys are comparable. I think Amari Cooper is comparable, if not better than DeAndre Hopkins. I think that Donovan Peoples-Jones is essentially the exact same archetype kind of player that a Will Fuller was. So he's got it set up there. Now he gets the most talented tight end that's never actually had a chance to prove it. And he gets a running back that is... I don't I mean Nick Chubb is he's different. You know what I'm saying? Like there's some guys where just like, yo, like different, like up here, here, the whole bit. He's different. So he he's not going to take any bullshit from anybody. And I feel like being around guys like that for a guy like Deshaun Watson, for better or worse, whatever his lifestyle is, that's going to be good for him. And that's going to be good for this team. And I think it's just going to elevate everybody. So I'm definitely there with you. I think that people at QB nine, I mean, QB nine to me feels like his his floor doesn't it kind of feel like that to you absolutely um sorry to interject i don't necessarily say i wouldn't say amari cooper is as good as deandre hopkins i'll definitely say hopkins is a, a little bit of a tier above for me but to your other points best tight end he's ever had for sure with david and joku best running back he's ever played with nick chubb for sure i like the offensive line better granted in houston he had laramie tunsil all pro left tackle that's great but we're not, it's not just one position on the offensive line. There's four, there's four other dudes on there. So in terms of a whole, like looking at the whole offensive line, I do like his situation with the Browns a little bit more. And I like his head coach a lot more. Kevin Stefanski used to be a Vikings offensive coordinator and head coach. I thought he was pretty good for us. So, you know, yep. I'm a fan of him. I think he's a lot better than Bill O'Brien was. Um, Bill O'Brien's <laughs> a knucklehead. So I definitely want to say that with respect, but – you know, I do think no Kevin Stefanski's a I think Kevin Stefanski's a tier above. Um, so I definitely like Deshaun Watson's situation a lot more now.